we're gonna jump right in to the Westminster Shorter Catechism's 21st question. Who is the redeemer of God's elect? But first, let's answer the question, what does it mean to redeem? Who is a redeemer? In his book, Reverberations of Faith, Walter Brueggemann identifies that this word actually has two usages and they both come from the ordinary daily life of ancient Israel. The first usage is to redeem or a redeemer. The second is to ransom. The redeemer is first and foremost someone who protects the family honor or preserves the family property that might be at risk. In Deuteronomy 19, the blood redeemer, quote, acts to preserve family honor by retaliating for death in the family. Brueggemann goes on to say this, the imaginative capacity of theological interpretation in ancient Israel transposed a concrete family practice into an expansive theological image. In that transposition, Yahweh is portrayed as the redeemer of Israel. He's the next of kin who acts to preserve Israel's life and protects its future. In the Exodus narrative or the Exodus motif of the people of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt, the Lord portrays himself as Israel's redeemer, almost like Israel's next of kin, stepping in to save them and deliver them from Pharaoh. It was, it was an ordinary term that Israel turned theologically and then applied it, and the Lord applied it to himself. This is the second usage of the word is to ransom. This is where freedom is purchased via a cash transaction. So in Numbers 35, the people are told not to accept the ransom of a person who has murdered someone. Why? Well, there's a penalty. And in this instance, the penalty is death. So don't take a cash payment from that person to buy their freedom. What Israel then does is they take this common economic transaction terminology and in Brueggemann's word, they, they transpose it into a theological metaphor. In Deuteronomy 7, the Lord also applies this idea of ransom to himself when he is said to rescue his people from Pharaoh. Many English translations translate the word here as uh, redeem. The Lord redeems Israel from Pharaoh. This is a good, good translation, but the word itself is actually the word that in many other places is, is translated ransom and this is in one sense kind of gets at the idea so close were their theological understandings of the two two different words in ancient israel's history this is the concept of redemption to redeem to ransom someone who delivers someone that might be at risk to buy freedom via a transaction and so the new testament begins to pick up this metaphor and then it's applied to jesus himself who is the redeemer of God's elect? And the Westminster Shorter Catechism answers it like this. The only redeemer of God's elect is the Lord Jesus Christ, who being the eternal son of God became man and so was and continues to be God and man in two distinct natures and one person forever. We've already looked at maybe some of the theological roots of this concept of redeemer. And we really see that it's Yahweh himself, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that applies, that, that cloaks himself in that theological metaphor. And the New Testament begin to apply this to Jesus himself. Obviously, there's a lot of theological nuance and just theological density packed into this question and answer. And it's something that Christians have believed from the very beginning that Jesus Christ has been the eternal son of God, and he continues to be God forever. So here's how Paul describes it in Galatians chapter four. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoptions as sons. The key part here for our question, at least, is that at the fullness of time, or at the right time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, the final part of scripture we want to draw our attention to for uh, our brief introduction to this question this week is Hebrews 7, 24, and 25. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him 
since he always lives to make intercession for him. The two key things I wanted to focus on with this um, devotional catechism this week is one, that we can root our understanding of Jesus' redemption in the Old Testament's understanding Israel's theological metaphor of the Lord, of the God of the universe, as their redeemer, especially in the Exodus narrative and the Exodus motif. He redeemed them out of Exodus. He delivered them. He stepped in to rescue them. There was some type of transaction. This is what the metaphor is saying. The second thing is to think about as it applies to who is the redeemer of God's elect? It's Jesus. And he is eternal. He is God come in the flesh and he lives forever now. What do you think about that question? Is the eternality of Jesus as, as a man difficult? For you to get your head around. Also, leave me a comment mentioning a future catechism or catechism question you would like me to explore. Go ahead and hit like if you haven't and subscribe so that you can continue to see these videos on a weekly basis. Thanks. But first, I think we need to draw attention to these beautiful double tree pillows. Color scheme seems a little off, but that's okay. That's not why we're here.